So I'd like to welcome um, uh, uh, for the next panel, which we're, where we're going to be talking about pivoting. We've got um, Dr. Marta Gasparin. So if you could turn your mic and camera on. Sandra Wiggins from DPI, Inzar Hack from Insight, and Amir Bazrafshan from Apricot Box. So if you'd like to just turn your mics and videos on. As soon as you start speaking, you'll um, appear in everybody's feed. Um, so um, I just ask the four panel members to introduce themselves. So Sandra, I'll start with you first. OK, so I'm uh, founder, MD, FD of DPI UK, who are manufacturers of soft signage for retail events and exhibitions. Brilliant, thank you. Marta? Hello, I'm Marta Gasparin. I am Associate Professor in Innovation Design Management at the University of Leicester in the Business School. Brilliant, and Inza, are you here? Yep, hi everyone. My name is Inza Hack. Um, I run a uh, full service digital design agency. We're based in Leicester, we've been going for about 12 years now. Um, and uh, yep, the company is an Insight Consultancy. And we've got Amir as well, haven't we? Hey, thank you. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name's Amir. I've run a video marketing agency for <laughs> nine years. And then um, late last year, founded the new startup, which we'll probably talk about shortly. Thank you. So um, I'm going to just start with Marta first and just ask the question, what is pivoting? We've put a couple of definitions for you in little pictures into the chat. But Marta, if you can give us a, a quick definition and then we're going to hear about real life business pivoting stories um, during COVID over the last year. Yes, so pivoting is um, a sort of business model innovation in the sense that it's a change in a part of the business model. For example, how do you reach customers? How do you engage with them? And this has been due to the COVID. So it's an answer from inside company on how to um, basically do innovate things and innovate processes in order to still reach the market and uh, reach the customers during COVID. Uh, in my research, the one that I've been conducting on small businesses during the pandemic, uh, I've seen that one of the most common features has been uh, rerouting and changing on the uh, engagement through a digital approach and developing uh, storytelling. So I've seen this approach has, uh, has become predominant in the business model innovation. Brilliant, thank you. And then I'm gonna just ask one big open question and then I'm very happy um, for, for to see where the conversation goes. So I will just start off with, how have you pivoted during COVID? And um, I'll ask Inzar first, if you can tell us how it's gone for you. Sure, brilliant. Thank you, Tobias. I'm going to answer that question in two ways, really. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll start off with uh, explaining how we pivoted and what that actually meant for us. And I'll go on to speak about one or two of my clients as well, who, who we've encouraged to pivot um, to, to sort of survive. So, I mean, as I, as I mentioned, I run a digital design agency. We've been around for about 12 years now, so we're fairly well established. Um, most of our clients are SMEs, micro SMEs, up to uh, the sort of headcount of about 50. So um, when COVID hit, obviously, it, it, you know, it was, um, you know, you, we've all heard the term unprecedented, you know, uh, unexpected. And it was one of those one of those things that took us all by surprise. And very quickly, we did we have to realize that actually things are never going to be the same. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the time for change is upon us. Um, and as, as a company myself, uh, you know, so we so in terms of we, we're, we're a small, we're a micro company. So all in all, there's about 12 of us in, in, in the entire team. Um, very quickly, we had to adopt new ways of working. So we all started working from home um, and, um, you know, realized that actually, you know, because of the kind of industry that we're in, we still had to remain um, quite innovative in the way that we work and collaborative. So we, we, we went to new uh, technologies and adopted new technologies. And the reason why we did that was because if we didn't, we just simply wouldn't have survived. So from a practical point of view, um, whereas most of our business used to come from word of mouth, um, networking, uh, a few of us from our business development managers, they, you know, they're, they're serial, serial networkers, um, we had to go online. 
So similar to what Martha said, that we just had to change the mode of uh, of, of, of work. Um, and I've got to be honest, um, you know, it, in the beginning it was very difficult because we were all finding our feet. If you'd asked me, you know, sort of a year ago what Zoom was, or you know, it, it, it was it was an unheard of term, and and yet all of us now in the entire globe, I think, know what that is. And 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 I've I've got to be honest, there are some benefits, but also some some downsides of that as well. Uh, me personally, I really miss the human interaction, um, but I can obviously see the benefits of that. Once we got familiarised with that way of working. Um, we, we introduce that to a lot of our clients um, that, you know, that you guys have to change if, if you know, if you don't adopt that change, things will be very, very difficult. Um, and I think the, the, the most promising thing out of all of this, what I've realized is just how resilient uh, the businesses are and, and how and now how open to change they are. So, yeah, it's been a mixed bag, really. But um, would I, you know, would I say pivoting is important? I think it's imperative. Brilliant, thank you. Sandra? Okay, so for us, I get very jealous when people say they're all working from home because I'm in factory. You can see, got factory behind me. I think uh, back in March, I openly said our order book fell off the face of the earth because, um, again, we work with events. Uh, retail and exhibitions so we lost two-thirds of our sector literally overnight and the reality was we sobbed for about probably two weeks ripped up all of our strategic plans and went shit we're not going to be able to do this so we better find something mm. else to do so as much as we are still working with retail we are still we've found lots of new markets um, it's about what can we do with what we do now because we're manufacturing, you know, we make stuff, we physically make stuff. And it's actually, I think our pivot was more about how we work and how we think. And the reality hit very quickly. The what no who knows what the new normal is gonna look like. It's gonna it's it's evolving every single day and you've just got to keep moving with it. So I think the biggest change for us, as much as we did like many people within our industries, we did the screens and we did all sorts of lovely, lovely, pretty things to help people that had to be in a workplace get back to work. Behind the scenes, while that was our free Front, our shop front of what we were doing behind the scenes we were doing lots of conversations engaging with the universities Christ would I have ever thought we would have ever engaged with a university and I think um, it was really interesting listening to the first um, talk when um, Tim was saying about how people find out the information and I think communicating with our client base who are obviously they're all on their backsides retail is in, in in you know a tricky situation right now let's be really honest but it's having those conversations and creating and collecting that data to actually go what's it going to look like going forward um and interestingly, when um, I can't remember who it was who said, Jeremy, wasn't it, who said, I just want to know what is it that you want to know? What, what What's the question? What is the question? Well, we've drove the university's mental trying to work out what is our question. And um, I think I've really, really begun to understand how collaboration getting out of our comfort zones we don't know it all we have to actually ask the questions collect the data and but still keep moving forward and i would say i think that's what our pivot is it's in the way we do things now mm. it's the way we reach out to get that help and that support because we don't know it all we've only got our views we mm. need a little bit of the data to actually justify what we're working on and i can tell you we're working on a lot of things that's actually going to incorporate um digital and and immersive technology into what we do because the data is coming back to say that there is some very very nice things happening in the future so it's more our pivot is about how we think and how we deliver ourselves as a business brilliant thank you amir thanks yeah so um like i said i was running a video marketing agency for a good eight or nine years and when you run that kind of business global pandemics and lockdowns tend not to to kind of like complement it 
mm. and we lost an eye-watering amount of business last last year. So after we went for a series went through a series of tests, and that basically led to changing the whole business model from an agency to what we do now with Apricot Box, which is a separate brand. The agency's still going. We create um, short videos for social media from from blog posts. So what happens, what that does is it enables our customers to get regular video content that can be created remotely. Um, so we can do that at a really good price. So we're sort of um, surprising people with our, with our packages and it's still agency staff creating the, the work. Um, so that's, that's really the pivot. And where we are now, we've we sort of went, started last September, we've got 16 customers now. And just in the last month, I've had to take on four new members of staff. And we're looking at creating a whole system, actual business system that will enhance the experience for, for our customers and make it as easy as possible. Because one of the things that I've noticed over the years is running a video marketing agency that video isn't always the easiest thing for people to buy. Um, so one of the things that I really, really care about is just making video really simple and really easy for people to get good quality content every month. And, and so and far, um, yeah. I was just going to say, Amir, your, your pivot involves a, a whole new product, uh, a different way of doing business and, and a different way of um, people paying as well. Yeah, it's a subscription model. Uh, so it's a completely different uh, business model. We're doing it on a, on a subscription uh, basis. And, and that really works for our customers because it's a low um, monthly uh, subscription cost. Um, packages are between like 100 and less than 300 quid a month for like four videos a month. Um, we, we can do that because of the way that we do the cost, stru cost structure around the video content. So we're looking more at LTV, lifetime value, rather than one-off projects. Mm. So that really gives us a lot of flexibility um, to um, to do that with our with our pricing model. Um, so yeah, it's it's new in lots of ways. And very much, uh, I think Reid Hoffman, the guy that started LinkedIn, said that when you have a startup, it's like jumping off a cliff and putting an airplane together on the way down. Hmm. I'm sorry, in that phase right now because um, sales and marketing is working. We've got a lot of customers coming in, um, and you know the pipeline is great. But it's sort of what this business, the scalability of the business very much depends on what I've learned over the last two months is the quality of the workflows and processes and how efficient and robust they are to take scaling. So that's sort of where I am at the minute. Fantastic. So the next question is for all four of you. What, what tips would you give other people to pivot their businesses um, during the pandemic? Can I go first? Mm. I mean, from my own experience, um, I mean, I, 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 and maybe it's it's the sector that I belong to. I mean, we we've we've I've always I've I've always been quite optimistic actually. And uh, when when the pandemic hit, I thought, okay, well, look, things are going to be really difficult. But what what can I do to actually make this into something positive? And I, I know that sounds really horrible because of what's going on around the world. But from a business point of view, we still have to get business in. So I made a conscious effort of internationalizing my business. So I realized that actually we don't have to be um, based, you know, my clients don't have to be based in the East Midlands, they don't have to be based in London, they could be based in the States, they could be, they could be based anywhere in the world. So the first thing I did was try to internationalize it and, and use it as an opportunity to get my name out to much, much wider circles than what I've ever been before. Mm. Um, so, you know, what, what I did is I went and understood what the differences are between the, the cultural habits, um, you know, and which is the closest to us in terms of the, the you know, the, the, the kind of way that we do business. Um, the obvious answer was the States. Um, and the big advantage for me um, and, you know, what I, I mean, on an average day at the moment, I'm about networking about four times. Um, and I've split my day up. So then um, I'm networking in the UK during the day and uh, early evening um, when America wakes up, I'm, I'm, I'm networking in the States. So I think if, if it was um, for, from my point of view, I think we, we've got to take this as, as an opportunity. Obviously, it depends on what sector you're in, but it has to, there has to be an opportunity in there somewhere. I'm going to say I'll jump in there. 
I think I think um, I wouldn't have known what the word pivot meant until probably April and everyone was going bloody hell Sandra your company's done amazing to pivot and I'm like what's pivot what's pivot all I'm trying to do is find another way to do business because I can't do it that way so now what do I need to do because I've got overheads I've got bills to pay I've got team to support and I need to get them back into work so we put a lot of of a thing on one word that maybe people think God, we have to do that. All it is, we're all making money. We're all making sure we're paying our bills, doing what we need to do. So I think for us, it wasn't the fact that we pivoted. It was just that we knew that events and exhibition was a no-no for us. And even back in April, May, we made the decision that that's not coming back for two years minimum for two years because by the time we've got through the fear factor and everything else so the reality is so what is it that we can do what is it that we can do to keep ourselves going and it's about creating an opportunity and testing it and do you know what it gave us a great sounding board for last year with what we did with our um, um, screens and, and frames coming as we came into December and we were watching the market all of the time, understanding how, you know, how the pandemic was was literally coming, running its course, I suppose, because the screens are now gone for us because we've we've got a vaccine. So that's no longer open to us. But but the thing was, all the work we were doing behind the scenes to create some new opportunities to go and have those conversations about how is the market, how are we as a business going to be fit for purpose in two years? Those were the questions that I really, really wanted to to answer and everyone's going you're manufacturing you're manufacturing digital digital can really support manufacturing and we're using digital in many different ways to from everything from our new ERP systems to make us more productive to how, what we want to do with our products going out in two years time that we are working on with the universities and it's all being data driven but more from the fact we're having conversations with the right people. And actually, we're not sitting on our backsides waiting for somebody to give us the answers to where we need to be. We've actually gone out there and gone, this is what we want to know. It's up to you, I think. You know, we, failure, yeah, do you know what? <sighs> been there done that worn the t-shirt on so many times and that's where you find your resilience from quite honestly and we have copped up a million and one times and gone shit that cost us okay we won't be doing that one again that's how you learn that's how you you create your resilience in business so uh, do you know what I, I hate to say it I'm so optimistic about the future and I felt really guilty about feeling optimistic and doing okay through 2020 because do you know uh, because you felt guilty because of what was going on well, I'm so proud of what we've done as a business and I really want to shout that from the rooftops and we've not done that by just expecting someone else to do that. We've done that by my teams being in, even when they were panicking about getting into work, about the thousands and thousands that it's cost us to keep our team safe to get into work, but because I cared about them, because I wanted them to make sure that they'd got a future. So I think we have to create our own opportunities. It's down to ourselves. Fantastic. Tobias has fell off the call, I think. Have so we... I'm, I'm, I'm here, but I've had to switch devices. So um, I think just carry on giving the top tips, Amir. Yeah, so I think in terms of businesses um, pivoting, I guess, from my perspective, a couple of approaches that might be useful. The first and probably most important is really deeply understand uh, your customers mm. and what their struggles, what their struggles are, and how their needs might have evolved or changed over the last twelve months or so. And then sort of look at how those struggles might align with what you're really good at, or what you could be really good at. The second thing to look at is uh, analyzing your business and are there areas 
that you're unaware of that are sort of overperforming that are perhaps, you know, the 80-20 principle? Are, are you getting a ton of value out of your business from just a small part? And if so, would it be worth kind of pivoting to doing just that and focusing all your resources on scaling that thing? Um, so, I mean, it's it's very contextual because every business will be will be different. But I think in terms of broad approaches, it really, really helps to understand what your customers are, what they're struggle, what they're struggling with, and then looking at um, your business and where where might you be um, excelling without really realizing it, or where might that resonance be with that, you know, where you don't really know. Um, so. Yeah, I guess fundamentally it comes down to really knowing your customers, talking to your customers, and pairing that with uh, things that you're that you're really good at and excel at. But can I can I just add a little bit to that? I mean, I I, I also I mean I think it's I'm I'm sort of maybe reiterating what what both the the previous two speakers have said, but it's actually about being brave. Um, it's about taking the risks, and uh, I think Sandra mentioned that you know. That not not everything seems to work, and you know you. But but that doesn't mean that you don't you don't try. You just have to keep going, and I think in in, in many ways, uh, you know, as entrepreneurs, we all have a responsibility to actually not not only is it that we we we're, we're actually maintaining and keeping our business, but actually we've got staff members to look after as well, and and yeah. and each staff member has a, has a family behind them. So, you know, in in my opinion, that that sort of you know, taking the risk, being brave, uh, and not being, you know, sort of failing forward, I think is going to be really key. Not not only has it been key in the, in, in in the last year, but actually, it's going to be even more so moving forward because it's 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 the risks that the higher, you know, the, the it's the big risks that give the big rewards. And you know, unfortunately, it's the way life is. Not every not everyone works. Not every risk works. But you know, we've just got to keep going. I've just say I've just picked up in the chat there. There's a there's a comment that said, "Can you only pivot once?" Christ, I think we've done it about fifty thousand times in the last year. If I'm really honest, so no, because pivoting is just changing a way of doing something that hasn't worked, as far as I'm concerned. So so that is what you do all the time in business. It's a little bit like trial and error, isn't it? Um, and also, I think for us, we've had to take a real honest approach a reality check of okay that's not going to be for us we can't sit and wait for that so you know the choices are do we you know we've had all sorts of conversations about do we just walk away do we just go hold our hands up and go the industries that we've served are not going to be there actually no we've just actually changed again our thought processes that happen on a daily basis in this place, which I really feel so sorry for my poor team having to keep up. It's a bit like, oh, she's off again. Tangent number 37 coming up, we'll catch up with her in a bit when, she, when she's got that formalised. And, and I think by actually reaching out and wor working with some of the professionals to soundboard some of the things that stuck in your head is has been one of the absolute game changing things for me over the last year you know I, I thought as being a business person I had to have all the answers and I should know all the you know I should have all of this set up and we don't because we're still testing and we have ideas and we have to soundboard the reality of those ideas and I think there's, there's a big thing there's a big cultural change I really hope within the business industry whatever you call us that actually we start collaborating a bit more because if we start collaborating a bit more that that change of ideas things will actually improve for every single one of us sounds great um when should a business think about pivoting <laughs> when they can't do what they're doing now when they realize there's an end of the road coming and just keep doing it all of the time keep challenging yourself keep changing 
you know and it, it depends on what you want out of business isn't it it depends do you want your business to scale up do you want to be the next I mean I go to I think about ICI and I know that's really showing my age probably many people don't know who ICI is but you know what is it that you want what is it that you want out of your business if you just want it to be a nice lifestyle business then maybe you don't want to pivot I don't know maybe you don't want to change what you do it's about your choice it's about what do you want yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think I think you're absolutely right, this Sandra. I mean, I, I think I think pivoting is a spectrum. So I think people have to keep keep moving. And if you're if you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again and expect different results, well, you know, that's 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 a sign of insanity. You've got yeah. you've got to change. And I think that has to be a process that that is ongoing. Um, yeah. It's just that uh, there's some there's some times in you know in 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 doing a business life that comes that you really have to make a change in direction, a real a real a real sort of strong pivot. But I think if it comes to evolution, we, we have to keep evolving as businesses all the time. Yeah. How boring would it be if we just didn't keep <laughs> learning? Oh God, I'd be bored senseless. Well, I, I think that's been a fantastic discussion. I've had connection difficulties during that. So my apologies for that. I think, um, Reginda, if I can invite you in at this point, I think we're going to have a, a break at this point before our next panel all about new money. <laughs>